All right, in this video, we are gonna be restoring and upgrading this 2006 Intel Mac Mini. Now, I actually purchased this machine off eBay for only $22, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, pretty, that's a pretty good deal for one of the Intel Mac Minis. For some reason, they do tend to go for quite a lot on eBay, even the uh, original ones. Even the G4s tend to go for a lot on eBay. But I managed to get this one for $22, and it was in, I guess you could say as is condition so something interesting about the listing was they had uh, taken the machine completely apart in order to upgrade the CPU but um, they said that after installing the new CPU uh, the machine would no longer power up well in the listing I could see close enough to the new processor luckily they uh, posted a picture in the listing of the actual processor and I noticed something. Now, uh, I have two processors right here. Uh, the one right here is a Core 2 Duo T7200 CPU. And the one right here is a Intel Core 2 Duo T7300 CPU. Now, if you look carefully at the two processors, you'll notice that they both have the same clock speed, the same amount of cache, but a different, uh, uh, a faster front side bus speed on the T7300 as opposed to the T7200. You can see that the T7200 has a 667 megahertz front side bus, whereas the T7300 has an 800 megahertz front side bus. Now the CPU that they originally tried to install to the machine was indeed this one, the T7300, and that it CPU is actually not compatible with the Intel 945 chipset that's used in these machines. So that is exactly why it did not power up. And luckily it did come with the original Intel Core Duo. Uh, I can't remember the exact model of it, but it's a, it was a Intel Core Duo 1.83 gigahertz CPU. Uh, I installed that and reinstalled the heatsink and powered it up and it does indeed work. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and show you that right now. So, um, let me go ahead and get this hooked up to my monitor. Now, actually, before I do that, when I got this machine, it was actually completely disassembled. The motherboard was out of the uh, bottom casing here, as you can see, I have, inst have it installed to now. Uh, it did come with a hard drive. It actually came with two hard drives, which is quite interesting. It came with the original 80-gig uh, hard drive, which I reinstalled in there now. It actually didn't come with that installed, but it also came with a 320 gig hard drive. Uh, that I actually took out and used in a different machine, but uh, the 80 gig hard drive is plenty for this machine. Now, along with that, I also got even more upgrades with the machine. That's right, I also got um, two gigs of DDR2 memory. Uh, it originally came with two 512 meg sticks installed, which are actually in there now. But they included with the eBay sale uh, two one gigabyte modules of DDR2 laptop memory. So that was a pretty nice deal, at least I think. Now one thing that did happen, uh, I guess it happened when they disassembled the machine because it was kind of like hanging off and I kind of hit it by accident and it came the rest of the way off. If you look up here on this board right here, there's actually supposed to be an infrared sensor soldered on right here. Um, it actually broke off, and it didn't just break off the joints, the uh, actual legs of it broke off the component. So, even if I were to try to solder it back on, it would be quite difficult and wouldn't really look right. So I decided to just leave it off. I don't really use the infrared sensor on any of my Macs, so yeah, it's really no big loss to me. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is hook it up to uh, my keyboard, monitor, and mouse. My monitor's right there. And I'm actually gonna just plug in a mouse. That's all we really need. I have uh, an Apple Mighty Mouse. We'll just go ahead and hook up to it. So I'll go ahead and plug in the DVI. I can get it in there. Uh, the power. Now, one thing about the power on these machines, uh, as you can see here, I am using a 110 watt power supply. Now, I actually just got this yesterday, or two days ago. Uh, because this was, uh, all I had was an 85 watt adapter for my 
uh, Mac Mini G4. I actually have one right there. Uh, and that actually did not work with the Intel Mac Mini. If you plugged it in and you attempted to power it on, it would do absolutely nothing. So that was quite interesting. And I actually thought it was broken at first. But I looked it up and found out that you do indeed need an, a 110 watt power supply to use these machines. And I managed to purchase this one off eBay for a decent deal. It was actually, it actually costed more than I paid for the actual machine. This, I think I paid about 30 or so dollars for this. Uh, these definitely aren't cheap on eBay. And, uh, I got a pretty decent deal for one. Usually they go for around $40 or even $50 in some cases. So I think I got a decent deal on this machine overall. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is plug it in. Let me go ahead and plug that in. I'm going to go ahead and plug the mouse in. And we'll go ahead and turn it on. Um, you can see the display immediately came up. And it is actually booting a install of Mac OS X Tiger that actually came on the original 80 gig drive uh, that was installed to the machine, or at least came with it. So let's just go ahead and wait for that to boot. Alright, so as you can see, we're in an install of um, yeah, we are in an install of Tiger 10411. Let's go ahead and do about this Mac. Now as you can see, this install is pretty used. It, I guess someone had used this as their main machine or something. But, um, yeah. So, right here, it says we have a 1.83 GHz Intel Core Duo CPU, which, like I mentioned, will be upgraded. Uh, it has a gig of RAM, as I mentioned, and the hard drive is 80 gigabytes. Now, for some odd reason, this install is like completely screwed up, and I actually can't load a uh, system profiler. Uh, I went into the utilities folder in applications, and it's not there, so I'm not exactly sure. Actually, nothing's there except for Adobe Flash Player, so I'm not sure what's up with this install, but it is completely screwed up. So yeah, I'm not going to even bother with this. So uh, let me go ahead and shut it down. And once it shuts down, we will go ahead and proceed with the restoration and upgrade. All right, so the machine is now shut down. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is completely take it apart and get the CPU heatsink off. And there is something I'm going to mention about that in a minute. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that and resume the video once that's done. So I'll be right back. Alright, so as you can see, I have removed the logic board of the machine. And what I was going to tell you about the heatsink is that uh, the mounts that were used to install it are actually not original. Um, it appears as though... Now, I actually installed this heatsink. It was installed even more improperly when I first got it. Uh, I, I installed... The, the rest of these things just to make it so it actually so I can actually power it on without it overheating uh, but anyway what I was going to say is uh, none of these heatsink mounts are actually original to this model um, these two or this one and uh, that one are appear to be uh, the heatsink mounts for a uh, PowerPC G4 based Mac Mini while these other ones appear to be some weird type of screws as you can see they are like they have like these plastic nuts that go on the back of them I'm not sure where these came from but uh, they seem to work okay I mean they're they're definitely not well loose or anything they they hold it down perfectly fine and put the proper pressure on the CPU so I'm not really gonna call it uh, replace those since I really don't need to so yeah you can see they have like a flathead bit in the top and then like I showed before on the bottom, they have a um, a uh, white plastic nut that goes on them. So, and they also uh, use the springs from the original mounts. Now, I actually did get the original mounts with this, and they're actually right here. But as you can see, the clip part that goes through the motherboard is actually broken. So these are pretty much junk. Uh, here's another G4 one. 
I actually have a bunch of parts over here. I got the spring. Here's a spring for uh, the uh, original mounts. Now the springs for the G4 ones are actually somewhat shorter. And yeah, they're not as, as tough, I guess you could say. But yeah, I'm not sure... Uh, what happened to these but yeah they are all broken and pretty much junk and unusable so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is remove the CPU heatsink as that takes two hands to do especially with these screw-in mounts so um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and resume the video once I'm done so I'll be right back alright so as you can see I have removed the CPU heatsink and uh, the two G4 style heatsink mounts are still in place uh, of course the uh, screw in ones came all the way out which is no problem so right here you can see we have the Intel Core Duo uh, let's see what model this is this is a T2400 and it is a 1.83 gigahertz processor now if you look at it compared to uh, let's see yes this is the T7200 even though uh, the T72 and T7300 CPUs are the exact same size and the I might add they use the exact same socket as well. Um, you can see that the die on the Core 2 Duo is almost twice the size of the Core Duo's die, so it's quite interesting. Um, as you may know, the uh, Core Duo CPU is only 32-bit, so you're limited to running Snow Leopard if you uh, use that as your main CPU. Now, if you were to upgrade that to a Core 2 Duo, as I'm about to do, uh, you can run up to Mountain Lion using the ML Post Vector or now Mac Post Vector method. So that's exactly what I'm going to do on this machine once uh, I get the CPU installed. So I guess what I'm going to go ahead and do now is install the CPU, uh, properly apply uh, Arctic Silver 5 Thermal Compound, which I have right here, uh, give it a test, and then after that I'll fully reassemble the system. So yeah, that'll be pretty cool. So actually what I'm also going to do is clean out the fan, I haven't shown that yet, but as you can see it is actually extremely dirty, so I will definitely be cleaning that out, as well as the uh, side of the CPU heatsink that it blows into. So yeah, it's pretty dirty in this system I might add. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and install the CPU, uh, partially reassemble the machine, and give it a test. So yeah, I'll be right back. Alright, so the machine has now been partially reassembled with the Intel Core 2 Duo T7200 processor installed. So let's go, let's go ahead and power it on and see if it works. And it works. So let's just go ahead and wait for it to boot up and we can check and make sure it detects the processor. All right, it is now booted. Let's go into about this Mac, and there it is. As you can see, it now detects it as a 2 GHz Intel Core 2 Duo processor. So now this machine can run 64-bit uh, versions of Mac OS. So that was a successful upgrade from a 1.83 GHz Core Duo CPU to a 2 GHz Intel Core 2 Duo CPU. So now the last thing to do is just reassemble the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and resume the video once I'm done. So I'll be right back. All right, well that was a much more difficult than I was expecting, but I finally managed to get the machine put back together. As you can see, it's in okay shape, uh, the top cases at least. Uh, it really, really needs a clean. I'm not sure what this is, but it's pretty gross, whatever it is. So I'll definitely be cleaning that soon. Uh, so for now, let's just go ahead and plug it in and turn it on. Plug in power, video, and the mouse. Alright, 
So now that everything's plugged in, let's go ahead and power it on. Alright, well I'm not sure why the fan's running at full speed, but I'll definitely have to open it up and check the connections. But other than that, it appears to be working just fine. So, yeah. There it is. Uh, let me just go ahead and shut it down real quick and see if I can figure out this fan. So, yeah, I'll be right back. Alright, so I just opened it back up and I realized I forgot to plug one little cable in. So, now let's go ahead and turn it on and it shouldn't spin up the fan. So... Alright, yeah, it's working fine now. As you can hear, the fan is completely silent. And there it is. Fully working Intel Mac Mini. Uh, upgraded with a Core 2 Duo processor. So there it is. 2 GHz Intel Core 2 Duo. 1 GB of RAM, which I meant to upgrade but forgot to, so I'll do that later. But, um, yeah, there's the machine. So let me go ahead and shut it down. And that was the full restoration and upgrade of an Intel Mac Mini. Hope you enjoyed this video.